Welcome back to another Fantasy Puck video. It's Chris, and today I'm going to be talking about five must-draft breakout players for this year's upcoming fantasy hockey season. Before we get started, guys, if you're interested in a more premium, more interactive, more engaging fantasy hockey experience, definitely be sure to check out our Fantasy Puck Patreon leagues. There's only a limited amount of spots left. Guys, be sure you're following us on all of our social channels. We're getting closer and closer to the start of the season, and training camps are just starting to get underway, so we'll have a bunch of updates and relevant fantasy hockey information for you guys. So be sure that you're following us on Twitter, especially on Instagram and TikTok. We're going to have a bunch of live updates updates coming throughout this week and into next week and furthermore before the start of next season. Up first, guys, we have Bowen Byram of the Colorado Avalanche, somebody that I'm personally really, really excited to see this season. Injuries have been the main focal point in Byram's career, unfortunately, and I have him on this list because of what I think he will be when he's healthy and plays a full regular season and where his value will be at in terms of a fantasy hockey defenseman in that sense. But I can understand why some people may be a little bit skeptical. Let's go over the numbers. If you take his stats over the past two seasons and total them, what you get is 72 total games where Byram would have had 41 points, 15 goals, 114 shots, 135 hits, and 80 blocks. This is only 72 games, and yes, it's over the course of two seasons. Byram seems to be progressively getting better, especially in deeper playoff runs like we saw the year before with the Abs when they went on their Stanley Cup run. Our projection below is very, very low, as you can see, and that is based on off the fact that he hasn't really stayed healthy over the past two seasons. His numbers are very low in retrospect because of that. I'm anticipating a big year out of Byram. If he can stay healthy, I think he's going to be an absolute stud. I think he's good for at least 40 points this year if he plays around 80 games. Could even be in that 50 point range. I would love it if he shot the puck a little bit more and managed to get some power play time, but he does have Kale McCarr in front of him, unfortunately. I think this is a good late bet with little to no risk and a bunch of upside. I've been anticipating the big breakout for Byram this season. Up next is Moritz Sider, and we talk about this guy a lot, guys. Like, Mike talked about him yesterday in the Must Draft Defenseman video. We know how much of a stud he is in terms of his peripherals, but I still think there is another level to Sider's game when it comes to his point totals. We saw the 42-point slump last season, and if that's his floor, that is a very, very high floor for Sider. And just the way that Detroit is trending towards this next season, guys, I think their offense is going to be a lot more deadly, especially bringing in a guy like Dabrinka, They've added some scoring forward depth as well too in Daniel Sprong as well as the fact that you've got guys that we're anticipating a bounce back from, like Lucas Raymond. I expect Sider to run Power Play 1 the entire year as he's on a contract here. He's going to be given every opportunity. I'm not worried about Gosses Bear taking away his Power Play time at all until I see that happening. And they just traded away Heronic as well, so they needed somebody to replace that Power Play 2 slot. That's why they brought in Gosses Bear for a year. But with Sider, I think there's legit 55 to 60 point upside that would make him essentially the Brady Kachuk of defensemen covering every single category at a very, very high rate. I'm really excited for the breakout year that Sider's going to have. Get on him before anybody else does. Up next is somebody that we were on a lot last season for a breakout year. I'm doubling down this year with Seth Jarvis. He played pretty much all year with Aho and Taravainen, and both of those guys struggled compared to their career averages. Aho was under a point a game for the first time in two years, and Taravainen was at a 0.5 point per game average when he's normally upwards above a 0.7 or a 0.8. The only real difference between last season and the season before with Jarvis was the fact that he played a full 82 games. He had 30 nine points last season. After taking a closer look at his numbers, I learned that he was incredibly unlucky last season, shooting 8% lower than the year before. I also learned that out of every forward in the National Hockey League with over 180 shots, Jarvis had the second lowest shooting percentage, showing you how really unlucky of a season he had as a whole. We saw Jarvis's shots per 60 jump from 7 to 8.4. Another good indication that Jarvis was just going through a slump last season was he was third on the team in points during the Canes playoff run this past year. He had 10 in 15 as well as he was third on the team for most shots and hits 
out of all the Carolina Hurricanes players. He had 37 shots and 42 hits in that 15 game span. So these are really good trends in the right direction. And I believe if Jarvis's line mates can bounce back along with him, he's playing in a great spot in Carolina, should be seeing top six minutes again this year. And I'm expecting a big jump in production, potentially something that we saw similar to what Martin Nietzsche had last year and I'm expecting a big bounce back after a sophomore slump for Jarvis's breakout year. I'm taking a player off of Mike's must draft wingers list which isn't even out yet so surprise surprise Owen Tippett is on that list but he's in such a good spot the more and more I look at his numbers the more and more excited I am for him going forward. Don't let the bad team fallacy scare you away from this guy if you do play in plus minus leagues he might be a little bit of a concern but the rest of his category stats are just so good guys number one he's got zero competition on this team Travis Konechny could even play on the top line with him going into next season if they're both playing right wing then I still think Tippett's going to get the first bid over him but he's for sure going to be power play one as well. Like I said, the more and more I look at his stats, the more and more I like him. He had 231 shots last year with 125 hits and 69 blocks, guys. That is a surprisingly high block rate for a, a forward in general. And then you combine that with the fact that he had like 230 shots, 50 points last season, two in 77 games. I'm so excited for him. We know Tippett had a good year last year. So why do I have him on this breakout video? Well, I have him on this video because if you look closer at the numbers they don't tell the full story of how good he was towards the end of last season it wasn't until his last two months his last 21 games technically where he started to see over 18 minutes average time on ice and during those 21 games Tippett had 17 points and 10 goals averaging around 3.9 shots per game I'm really excited to see him on Philly next year when he's likely going to get that average time on ice that he saw towards the end of last season Mike and I I both love this guy he's going to be a great pick this year be sure that you grab him especially in leagues that count hits he is going to play a lot and he's going to score a lot Finishing up our list, guys, we have Tyler Bertuzzi of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and he doesn't quite have the potential or the skill as some of the younger players in this video. As you can see with Bertuzzi, the biggest issue with him has also been his injury, similar to Byram. I also think out of everybody in this video, Bertuzzi probably has the best opportunity to hit a massive breakout this season after signing with the Leafs this summer. But like I said, injuries have continued to plague him in his career. He's never hit over the 75 game mark, even the 70 game mark in the past two seasons and so we look at his point totals from last year and they dropped drastically especially his goal totals after only shooting at seven and a half percent with his career totals in Detroit being 14.5 percent over the last seven years if we look past last season's terrible output the year before he was close to a point a game with 62 points in 68 games and more importantly he had 30 goals during that span it's not necessarily a guarantee that Bertuzzi is going to slide onto that top line with Matthews and Marner. But even if he does end up playing in the top six, Bertuzzi is in a great spot to capitalize on the Toronto top six and have himself a very, very productive season if he can stay healthy. The risk is definitely warranted based off of Bertuzzi's injury concerns, but the upside and the potential is definitely there for a big breakout season. Guys, that is going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below on a breakout player that you're really excited about this year. And if you want to see more breakout players or another breakout video, be sure to leave a comment down below as well too, guys. I did leave a lot of players off this list, but because we talk about them frequently in other videos as well too. So if you guys are interested in seeing another breakouts video or any other type of video at that, leave a comment down below on what you guys want to see out of us. We're here to provide you guys with the best fantasy hockey content. So if you you guys think a specific video would be good let us know in the comments down below but that's gonna do it for me this video guys leave a like hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed we have so much more content that we've already made and created for you guys coming soon thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you in the next video have yourselves a fantastic rest of the day